If I were asked to name the most prolific modern grandmaster in terms of innovative ideas, I would name neither Fisher, Spassky, Larson, nor Petrosian, but Bronstein, Paul Keres. Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I would like to share with you a wonderful attacking game played by Soviet chess grandmaster David Bronstein. His opponent is Serbian chess grandmaster Lubomir Luboevic and the game was played in 1973 at Petropolis Interzonal. Let's see what happened on the board. Bronstein opened up with e4 and Luboevic responded with knight f6, Alakine defense. Here is what Paul Keres writes. Ljubojevic usually chooses the Sicilian defense. His choice of Alakai's defense for this game probably means he has prepared an improvement in one of its complicated variations. That would be very hard to meet over the board, but it is not so easy to take Bronstein by surprise in complicated positions. Here we have e5, knight d5, d4, d6, c4, Knight b6 and f4. Bronstein is choosing the sharpest line in Alakine defense. He goes for 4 pawns attack. He takes e5, f takes e5 and c5. Not the most popular continuation. Usually Black is either playing knight c6 or bishop b5. But in our game we have c5. Lubavitch is like sidestepping the main theoretical battle. Here comes d5. E6, Black keeps on challenging white center, knight c3, e takes d5, c takes d5, and c4. Although with this move, Black is placing his pawn on a dangerous square, but at the same time is opening up his dark squared bishop's diagonal. Knight f3, bishop g4, and queen d4. We have a double attack. Bishop takes f3, g takes f3, and bishop b4. Black is sacrificing his pawn on c4. By sacrificing a pawn, Black manages to complete his development and can hope for attacking chances against White's center pawns. The position now becomes very exciting. Bishop takes c4, Black castles king's side and rook g1. Bronstein is putting his rook on a very active attacking square, but what is interesting, Stockfish offers another move, a wild bishop h6 sacrifice. The idea is that if g takes h6, then white can go for e6, and if bishop e7, then rook g1 check is coming, and then f4, and white is actually managing to unleash a very dangerous attack. But in our game, we have a comparatively Calmer rook g1 move. Already Black wants to go for e6 and open up the queen's diagonal. g6 was played. Black is acting against any possible threat and it turns out that two years earlier in 1971 Ljubojevic had this position against Honfi. Instead of playing g6 in that game, Black chose queen c7 but quickly lost. Ljubojevic played e6 and after f6 played bishop h6 and after queen takes c4 he went for rook takes g7 and after king h8 played rook g8 check in and black resigned. If rook takes g8 then queen takes f6 is coming and if king takes g8 then the queen is joining the attack from g1 square. Let's go back this way. In our game after rook g1 we have g6. Although yes Black is neutralizing the threats from this diagonal and the g file, but at the same time, this is weakening the dark squares. Bishop g5, queen c7. Black is both moving away his queen, is attacking the bishop on c4, and at the same time is threatening bishop c5. But in this position, Brostein made a fantastic decision and he played bishop b3. Yes, he's provoking Black to go for bishop c5 and bishop c5 is on the board, queen f4 and with bishop takes g1. White is giving up a whole rook and at first glance it's not clear what he hopes to get for it. The further course of the game however will make that clear. d6, of course you can't play queen f6, Black can always respond with knight d7. That's why in our game we have d6, queen c8. And another very insane move by Bronstein, king e2. Well, castling queenside looks more natural, but Bronstein plays king e2 in order to keep this c1 free for the rook. Bishop c5 was played, which is a mistake after which Balek is facing serious problems. 
Instead of playing bishop c5, it was better to play queen c5. And now if rook takes g1, then simply queen takes g1. And if e6, then knight d7. If e takes f7 check, then king g7. And if bishop h6 check, then king h8. Balek is managing to defend, but still the position remains extremely sharp. Pay attention please that all the essential squares which white could use are successfully covered. Let's go back, but in our game after king e2, we have bishop c5. Now comes knight e2. The knight is coming to exploit the weaknesses of the dark squares and knight d7. Another mistake by Ljubojevic, it was better to play queen h3. And now if knight takes c5, then queen g2 check and then queen takes b2. Black can manage to prolong his resistance. But in our game we have this fatal error, knight d7 and rook c1. This quiet move is decisive since Belek has no defense against the following sacrifice. Queen c6 was played and there it goes. We have the second rook sacrifice. Rook takes c5. With this move, Bronstein is luring away the knight which was successfully covering the f6 square after which we have knight f6 check, king h8 and queen h4 with a direct mating threat. Queen b5 check, now comes king e3 h5 and simply knight takes h5 which just asks itself to be played. In order to prolong his resistance, Ljubojevic played queen takes b3 check. Well, if queen d3 check then white can always find a safe shelter for his king. That's why in our game we have queen takes b3. Ljubojevic is removing the bishop in order to manage to switch into the game his knight but there is no way out. Black's position is lost here. Instead of moving back his knight, Bronstein played king d4, attacked both knights, knight d6 check and we have king takes d5. Look at this insane position guys. Where's white king going? Knight takes g5, we have knight f6 discovered check, king g7 and queen takes g5. Black's position is totally lost, but as David Bronstein was in a serious time trouble, Ljubojevic decided to try his luck and still made a few more moves. Here comes rook d8 and e6. f takes e6, king takes e6, rook f8, d7, a5. Black wants to switch into the game his rook from the 6th rank, knight g4, rook a6 check, king e5, rook f5 check and queen takes f5 and after g takes f5 the new queen appears on the board. f takes g4, queen d7 check, king h6, queen takes b7 and after rook g6, f4 finally we have a resignation. Just a wonderful game and here is what Bronstein writes. After the game, the American chess my sinus. Isidore Turover gave me his own brilliancy prize in the form of two magnum bottles of the finest French champagne. It took us only two hours to finish them. While we were celebrating, he repeated several times in Russian that he did not send someone, but I went into a shop on my old legs to buy them. In the end, as usual, I would like to ask you to solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position, which is also taken from David Bronstein's game. It's white to move and win the game. I will wait for the killer move in the comment section. Thanks for watching. For more games, consider subscribing to my channel. Also, press the bell button to get notified about new uploads. I will see you in my next video. Take care.